It's a surrender or it's a cooperation. A lot of people mistook Qualcomm and Intel as Huawei's direct competitors, thinking that they were the ones blocking Huawei and calling it a complete failure of US sanctions. But let me tell you, that's a major misunderstanding, a big mistake, my friend. You see, Qualcomm and Intel are cheap designers. After they create their chips, they sell them to various smartphones, computers, and device manufacturers through companies like TSMC or Samsung for manufacturing. Now, Huawei happens to be their biggest customer, their guard, you know. So why in the world do they want to sanction Huawei? It's unreasonable, right? So who really wants to put Huawei in hot water? For Qualcomm and Intel, their biggest competition would be Apple. Yeah, you heard me right. Apple with its self-designed hardware and software, the outsource manufacturing to TSMC or Samsung, that's a real threat to Qualcomm and Intel's level, my friend. So in my humble opinion, there's no surrender happening here. The two giants of chip manufacturing and Huawei's two major operating systems are now officially working together, moving away from the so-called boycott and sections towards cooperation. Now I know some of you may be must wondering, how on earth did these two powerful American companies decided to join forces with Huawei, especially under the high pressure from the US government? And also you might be asking, what does that mean for tax-savvy investors like us? Well, today I will be answering all of these questions for you, one by one. Get ready for some mind-blowing insights into this game-changing partnership. All right, let's talk about these collaborators first. Firstly, we got Qualcomm. They're the big semiconductor company known for producing top-notch chips. And guess what? The Chinese market, being one of the biggest market in the world, is super important for Qualcomm. They are global internet giants and they've got their market presence all around the world. But let me tell you, the Chinese market is one of the biggest and most crucial sales territories. In the 2022 fiscal year, Qualcomm raked in a whopping 63.3% of its total revenue from China. That's huge, right? So there's no way for Qualcomm can afford to give up on the Chinese market. But here's the catch. If Qualcomm doesn't hop on the Harmony OS train, their chips will miss out on a massive potential market. That's a huge loss, my friend. They're facing the ban from the US government and they're forced to consider their own interests. If they keep butting hands with Huawei, they might even lose Huawei as a major client. And let me tell you, if Huawei's Kiri chips open up to Chinese smartphones manufacturers, Qualcomm will definitely get pushed out of Chinese market. On top of that, Qualcomm's lower-end and mid-range chips are also facing fierce competition from chip giants like uh, MediaTek. So, by jumping on the Harmony OS bandwagon early on, Qualcomm is trying to seize this opportunity and seize the market. So the fact is, Qualcomm's decision to join Harmony OS is all about weighing their own business interests and strategic consideration. Now let's switch gear and talk about Intel. In fact, back on November 2022, Intel made it official on the communication world network. And they joined Huawei's OLA open source community. By joining this OLA system, Intel becomes the largest hardware giant in the OLA open source community. And you know what? Intel's decision to join the OLA probably has its own motivations. In the world of mainstream architectures, you've got ARM from the UK and Intel's x86. But hey, let's not forget about Raising Star. 
Then we saw Intel together with Microsoft form the famous Wintel that dominated the global PC market for years, raking in massive profits. But my friend, with the advent of the mobile internet era, the ERM plus Android combo came in like a storm and the Wintel alliance started crumbling. Especially when Intel lost those Apple orders and got stuck on the 10 nanometer chip manufacturing front. If they lose this architecture market as well, who knows what could happen? Intel definitely doesn't want this kind of future, so they decided to join the open source Euler community. By doing so, they can tap into the Chinese market for developing digital infrastructures. With the advantages brought by the x86 architecture, Intel can diversify their computing ecosystem, my friends. That's very good for Intel. So from this perspective, both Qualcomm and Intel are looking for competition, but more importantly, they are also seeking cooperation. However, the US government and Apple, on the other hand, just want to monopolize and have no interest in the competition or collaboration. Now, let's we dive into this tech extravaganza and all started with Huawei's two operating system. We've got Harmony OS for smart devices and Ola for server infrastructure. On August 4th, 2023, Huawei officially launched the Harmony OS 4. The Harmony OS ecosystem already boosts over 700 million devices and there are whopping 2.2 million Harmony OS developers out there making it happen. Huawei's goal is to have better control over the software ecosystem, allowing for seamless integration of hardware and software and delivering an outstanding user experience. How many OS isn't just for the smartphones, it can be used in the smart homes, cars, and various other devices. It might even become a leading global operating system platform in the future. Serving areas like robotics industrial and medical devices opening up a world for possibilities. Now, let's talk about Ola. Open Ola is a foundational development platform, an open source operating system for digital infrastructure. You can deploy Ola on servers, cloud computing, edge computing, embedded devices, you name it. It covers IT, CT, and OT scenarios, providing a unified operating system that supports multiple devices and enables developers to create applications for all kinds of situations. And here's the kicker, both Harmony OS and Ola are open outsourcing platform. That's a big deal, folks. Being open source means no one can dominate or control them. It's all about sharing resources and collaboration. But this is important to note. Harmony OS is still in this early stage of development. It got some catching up to do compared to the mutual operating systems like Android and Apple's iOS. While Qualcomm's support can definitely give Harmony OS a boost. If it wants to be successful in the market, it needs to continually improve the technical capabilities and user's experience and build a robust ecosystem. And now, here's some exciting news, folks. Dr. Wang Chenglu, the former president of Huawei's consumer BG software department, spews the bang that we might see a PC version of Harmony OS next year. That's right, a Homo OS-powered PC hating the market. This news blow up the tech scene. Developing a brand new computer operating system is no easy task, folks. It's like reaching for the stars. It involves creating a new system based on new kernel and rally countless developers to adapt application formats. This process is filled with challenges and unknowns. And get this. Huawei's high silicon team with over 2,000 members have already successfully developed PC chips to replace Intel. They're aiming to launch their own chips next year. That shows how ambitious Huawei is, alright folks? They're thinking bigger than we can even image. But wait, behind the scenes of Harmony OS, there are some concerns we need to address. 
First and foremost, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Homo OS doesn't have a complete software application ecosystem just yet. Whether it wants to be a smartphone operating system or grab a piece of the pie in the PC operating system world, this is a real challenge. Windows has tried for so many years because of its vast area of compatible applications. Let me put it this way. If you had a phone that couldn't run TikTok, WeChat, or YouTube, or play latest games, would you still want to spend all day on that? So, how many OS is not trying to be a solo act here? It needs everyone's cooperation. Next up, if how many OS wants to break through the competition from the Mac OS and Windows in the PC realm, it needs to be bring something unique to the table. But where exactly will that differentiation come from? AI? Or collaborative integration with other devices like phones and cars? At this moment, things are a bit unclear. Lastly, according to the media reports, there's still concerns about how many OS completely detaching itself from Android. So it is not all smooth sailing. In a nutshell, from creating products to developing systems and ecosystems, it's a dream of all the big players out there. Not just the Huawei, like we see there are rumors that Xiaomi is also exploring its own Mi OS. And as we know, Huawei's Harmony OS is not just limited to the smartphone version, car infotainment system version, or PC version. But let me tell you, Huawei is facing quite a number of challenges on its path. However, as they say, where there is will, there is a way. So if you watch video here, you may ask about this question. How is Huawei tackling these challenges? Well, to wrap things up, I'd like to quote a statement from Huawei's founder, Ren Zhengfei. He said, Only companies that are good at self-criticism can survive in this world. Success isn't always a reliable guard to lead us into the future. Mr. Ren Zhengfei puts it, If a company is truly powerful, it should dare to criticize itself. Companies on the verge of collapse are too scared to expose their flaws. If we want to stand tall in the world, we must be willing to confront our own shortcomings. It's the survival of the fittest. Only companies that consistently sense the crisis can truly survive. That's why Huawei is bound to thrive. 